Couldn't help but resist uh, this particular one. <laughs> Just a hilarious new analysis of the data. Let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. CNN just suffered its worst ratings week in nine years. So let me just read you these numbers because they're genuinely stunning. Average across all of CNN, according to Nielsen, was 444,000 in prime time, 93,000 in the all important age 25 to 54 news demographic, 417,000 total viewers, 80,000 in the demo for the total day. By comparison, they're, they're doing so badly that they even look like a joke in relation to the other cable industry, which is also doing like a joke. Fox News drew a total of just 1.4 million. That would have been terrible even five years ago. And only 176,000 of them in the key demo. MSNBC notching only 629,000 total viewers, only 69,000 in the key demographic. I mean, just imagine this. At the peak of Fox, MSNBC, and CNN, not a single one of them can crack more than 250,000 people in the key demographic. Imagine a basic YouTube creator out there is getting more than 250,000 views in the key demo. I think almost 100% of the views on this channel and of our podcast downloads, from what we are, uh, are able to know, are all in the key demo. And you could probably say that about all of new media, mm -hmm. independent media. So this is just horrific. And it doesn't make any sense relative to the amount of money that they get paid because it's a fake industry, yeah. the entire thing, propped up That's by so these... Um, cable subscriber fees. That's Can you imagine okay. if someone paid us a billion dollars just to exist? That's, that's basically what it is. That That's how their business model, it has no impact on whether people watch their stuff or not. But the funny part to me is that all of the new changes that they've made at the mm. Network Crystal have been a massive failure. The Don Lemon one in particular has actually, which was supposed to revamp the morning, they actually dropped from their originally pathetic numbers by several, uh, by tens of thousands of in viewers in total. It is now the one of the worst, most dismally rated shows in the history of cable television in the morning. And what are they going to do about it. I mean, look, at this point, I'm not sure if it's possible. Like CNN CEO Chris Licht, uh, he gave an interview yesterday to the Los Angeles Times. Let's put this up there on the screen. Uh, and this is one of those interviews you probably should just never say some of these things out loud because he was like, we want to restore trust. And the interviewer is like, what does that mean? Uh, why exactly do you want to restore trust? And he said, well, we have a lot of data to say that trust has eroded. <laughs> and you're like, wow, he you're just really, admitting that He can't really openly. explain why, but right. he's like, we got to fix it because we can see in our data yeah. it's a real problem. We can see within <laughs> our data that people don't trust us anymore. Uh, of course, his solution to that was hiring Bill Maher, was putting, I guess. And putting and Don Lemon in the morning. <laughs> putting stuff that was available on YouTube for free on 1130 at night. That's an interesting strategy. Uh, we'll see if it works out. Uh, yeah, putting Don Lemon in a hoodie um, up on the morning. Okay. Uh, and uh, again, fascinating. Also, of course, as you, you actually worked in this environment. I never have. I'm only observed. They're already sniping at each other from behind the scenes. Oh, you they're can like, tell. They're, you know, there's strife at the show as it struggles to find its voice. You can it's tell like, what does they that even mean? despise each other. Yeah, clearly. I mean, and some yeah. of that between Caitlin Collins and Don Lemon, the fact that that's spilled out onto the air right. tells you it right. is really that's ugly behind the scenes. Because, I mean, they really, you know, obviously you're trying to be professional and whatever. You try to keep that behind the scenes. So the fact that's spilling out on air at all tells you they, like, already completely despise mm -hmm. each other. And, yeah, the fact that there are these kinds of leaks coming out from the program about its troubles, uh, apparently the EP... For, uh, that was, you know, originally on the show has already been reassigned. Yeah, already fired. Which like already, months. you know, which right. is a major indication that they feel like this is not going well. And part of what, uh, listen, I haven't watched it, so I don't want to claim I like really know the ins and outs of why it's failing and why the mechanics aren't working. But what they're talking about is the whole concept is really kind of confused. At least with the, you know, John John Berman and Allison Camerota, like they had a decent camaraderie. They were able to bounce off each other, and you knew what the show was, mm -hmm. right? It's a political morning show. It's a news morning show with the CNN liberal slant. Like, that's what it is. Now they're sort of trying to bring in these elements of, like, a Today Show kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But then it's also trying to be the, you know, CNN news politics thing that it was. 
and the two things just do not really mesh together. And so there's concern of like, okay, well, you're not winning the morning show watchers from Today Show. That's a totally different thing. And you're not winning those people over. And now you're in danger of losing the audience, the small audience that you did have. So, and then, you know, you put together three personalities that clearly don't like particularly like each other or vibe, which is incredibly important on television. Um, and, you know, nobody wants to watch three people who like hate each other's guts. <laughs> no one wants to watch that, <laughs> except for in like a viral clip that I'll yeah, watch, right. but as a sustainable, like, this is how I'm going to start my day. Absolutely not. So that's a disaster. Their other big change that they are making is instead, at least this is the way I read it. I don't know. I read this like four times to make sure I was understanding it correct. Here's what they say. The network is going to host a standalone weekday nine to 12 block anchored by John Berman, Kate Baldwin, and Sarah Sidner. Mm. Then they're going to have a 1 to 4 p.m. standalone block hosted by Brianna Keeler, Boris Sanchez, and Jim Shudo. So instead of having, like, the individual anchors per hour, they're going to do two more giant three-hour blocks with these trios of anchors, which, again, like, you know, if the vibe works out, maybe. I mean, right. but if any of these people have friction or they're not able to gel together, it's going to be a disaster. I don't know. And the whole thing just has the it, – it's giving – rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic box. Absolutely. Not bringing in anything new, not really doing anything new, just like, let me just reconfigure what I've got here and sell it like it's some brand new concept and we're doing something totally different when really it's just kind of the same old thing in a new, probably worse reconstituted form. Their biggest problem is, how can you go outside the form when anybody with a brain would not work within that form? Imagine if they came to, first of all, it would never happen, but like if they came to us, they're like, whoa, you should come. You're like, so we should shorten our show, give up our business, give up our independence, all to come and work for you so that we can speak in between advertising breaks, all while having a corporate censor over right. your mouth the entire, why, why would we ever do that? Of course, you know, they say money, but like, Look, some of us value things much more than money. It's called independence and being able to say what you actually think. And there's a lot of people like that that are all in this business, none of whom would even conform to what CNN would want. And then number two, anybody that would probably be willing to go work there, well, that's not really somebody who's going to be able, even really be able to bring an audience in the first place. True. The Mar thing is not a bad strategy. I mean, since he has a big uh, a fan base that does watch him on HBO and you have some of that, but I just keep coming back to if you really want to watch just go on youtube like why you tune in live what Im that impetus i just think that's gone i think it's dead uh outside of Breaking premier news. prestige television like the last of us which i'm currently obsessed with <laughs> dying right now from the last episode guys. people who know what i'm talking well, about well there's there's that yeah. there's sports right. which people like yeah, to watch live right and then there's if there's some major breaking news event i mean that's still where CNN and MSNBC and Fox News, but CNN in particular, that's where they really still have a value add because mm -hmm. they do have this gigantic global footprint. And if you're just in a situation where the facts are coming, you're trying to figure out what the hell is going on, you know, that's still where they are kind of like at their best. But you can't bank there are going to be a lot of weeks where you don't have that gigantic breaking news tentpole type of event. And I think your initial point is the most important one and one that, frankly, all of these cable news uh, operators are aware of, which is that their business model is a zombie shell. It does not make sense. Like, if you were going to invent this thing today, it would never work. Yes. Because people would be like, I'm not paying these premium ad dollar rates for your show that nobody watches and which has, like, a trash reputation. Mm. I'm not paying, you know, to add you to my cable bundle, like charging my cable subscribers more to add you to my cable bundle when people aren't even really watching. I'm certainly not paying you what they're getting paid right now. And so that's why you see all this cost cutting across the industry. I mean, in particular at MSNBC and CNN, Fox, because they have a larger audience, they have a little bit of a larger, longer time frame, but the writing is on the wall for them as well. You know, they're they're trying to hold on as best they can to what they have to pare down their expenses and be able to make it work. And, um, you know, you can see it in this sort of like 
rearranging the deck chairs <laughs> approach that Chris Licht is taking because you can't pay to bring in gigantic new talent. That's not going to work out. Um, they cut the you know original series that mm -hmm. CNN was paying a lot of money for those, and frankly, they were successful. Yeah, some but of them were good. Even that, they you know they're they're cutting all of that out. He's saying, oh, we're going to do it in house, and it's just going to be just as good. I'm highly doubtful of that. So anyway, that's the situation that they're in. We'll see where it all ends. Good luck. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now, and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us, and if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.